So hello and welcome everyone to this uh, Friday webinar series where we today are extremely happy to also uh, celebrate the International Day of People with the Stuttering. Uh, we are still having people coming in so I wait, we want to uh, start in just a few seconds. Um, we are uh, providing presentations and a panel today and there's also as always a possibility to use the Q&A function of of Zoom. If you have any questions to the presenters or the panelists, then please use that functionality and we'll make sure to, to reply to as many of your questions as possible. And we also have captions available um, via the closed captions button in, in Zoom, so the CC uh, button. And this webinar will be recorded and uh, we will send the link to the recording to everyone who has registered uh, afterwards. So I think we now yeah, it's a little bit more people still coming in, but I think we can we can start. So, um, so we just um, we are presenting today. Um, well, we are we have two or maybe three um, reasons to do this uh, webinar today. We have prolonged the the um, Friday webinar time to be able to really do a, a good celebration of this uh, the International Stuttering Day. Uh, so that is really uh, interesting. We also have a very distinguished panel with us today to discuss issues around accessibility and, and speech impairments. Um, and we are also presenting our new project on stuttering uh, or uh, speech as a digital tool, which is the, the name of, of the project. And we also uh, have a specific call to action to the Swedish part of our uh, audience today uh, who have the possibility to, to collaborate with us in this project, uh, which is nationally funded. So I think we can um, get going uh, with this. Uh, the, the webinar is uh, recorded, uh, just so that you know that. Um, we are going to start off this presentation as or this webinar as we normally do, we with starting from the end user perspective. Uh, so, uh, Stuttering in a Digital World uh, is going to be presented by Anita Blum, um, who we know since a long time. She's kind of a brand old lady in, in the stuttering community in, in Sweden and also nationally, nationally and locally, regionally and at an international level. And she's also one of the, she has been very active in this uh, community for, for many years. Um, now she's more um, focusing on, on being innovative and spreading her ideas around. So I'm extremely happy to have met Anita, uh, I don't know how many years ago, and, and starting to discuss with her uh, the idea of this project. So she's really the, the, the idea, uh, the, the person behind the idea of this project. Uh, and then we, and she will tell you a little bit about the background and, and how, uh, how it is to live uh, with stuttering today in the digital society. And then I will leave the floor to my colleague Eva, who is the project leader of this um, the, the project. So she will do a, a short presentation of the speech as a digital tool, a, a project that just recently started. So we don't have any results yet, but there will come interesting results uh, as well. Uh, and then we will go on to the panel discussion. And we have a very distinguished panel with us today, also with international uh, experts on stuttering and also and uh, representation from the uh, from the industry and also from uh, from the public sector. But I will present the uh, the panelists when we when we get to that uh, section. So um, I would like to ask uh, Anita. The floor is yours. Please tell us everything that is that we need to know about living with stuttering in a digital world. Thank you, Su Susanna. Um, as it will take me 20, 20 minutes to make a 10 minutes pr pr presentation um, talking about stuttering and why this project is so Im important to us. Um, I'm going to read it instead to save you a lot of time. So my name is Anita Blum. And what you just heard or did not hear is called a block one of many types of stuttering. Knowing very well what you want to say, but not getting the chance to say it can be very frustrating. And this frustration and thus the stuttering can increase when someone else interrupts you or fill in your words. I can say what I want to say. It only takes a little longer. So 
being interrupted means that what I say is considered not important, may, while it in fact may very well be so. Can you please change the slide? So please listen to us because what we say is worth repeating. Can you go to the next slide, please? This drawing is made by a boy who stutters. He's worried that when his house is on fire, he won't be able to get through to the fire department because of his stutter. When you call Swedish authorities, such as the police, the health information, the Swedish tax agency, etc., you often have an errand that's not very pleasant. But you make that call simply because you need help. And the first thing you encounter after dialing the number is an electronic voice asking you to state your errand. And when I stutter doing so, I get interrupted by, 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 by a mechanical voice saying, sorry, I don't understand your answer. Please repeat. My frustration increases, but I decide to try again because I need help. And this time the voice said, sorry, I still don't understand your answer. Who would you like to speak to? Now, if I'm still stubborn enough, which I am, to expose myself to this concrete wall of technology one more time, even though I know I'll stutter even more now because of the frustration, I get the answer, sorry, I don't understand what you're saying. Please call back later. Next slide, please. Now, this doesn't only affect me and over 100,000 other adults who stutter in Sweden, or half a million children who stutter in Sweden only. Also people who clutter, people with aphasia and other speech and language disorders, laryngectomy patients, people with a cold or hoarseness, immigrants and others who, who, who for various reasons cannot speak proper fluent Swedish. They too find themselves bouncing against these walls. So now we're talking about maybe close to a million people in Sweden who are at risk of hearing, sorry, I don't understand your answer. Please try again. And it's not only voice control technology like an answering machine being a hurdle. Imagine being on the German Autobahn where speeds are 150 kilometers, which are very normal there. And you want to ask a question or give an instructions to your GPS when having a stutter. Or when the family has purchased a Google Home system and you are the only one who cannot use it. There are many of these examples which you might not even think about. Next slide, please. Google started a project, Euphonia, where they asked people who stutter to record a bunch of phrases for, for for, for that technology to un understand stuttering. Wow, what an amazing initiative. Of course I joined. I spent hours recording the phrases, giving it my, my best stutter and I sent it off. Uh, a few days later, I received an email saying, thank you for your help. Unfortunately, we cannot use it because you stutter. But the, the effort to try and improve is so very welcome. And I also contacted the national phone company, Telia, a couple of years ago, who also had voice recognition. And I asked them to adjust their, their answering service to also be accessible to people with speech and language disabilities. They listened, and now we have the option to speak or to press buttons to come to a person at the department of choice. As that's what we all want, right? Speak to a person. The next slide, please. Today, technology is a part of everyone's life and we cannot live without it. So let's find solutions. I can talk, I want to talk, and I should get the opportunity to talk when and what I want to say. Without technological barriers, Instead of being forced to use alternative methods of contacting, like emailing, or being forced to ask a fluent person to help me get past the machine. 
some authorities and companies don't even offer email, only phone communication. So how can I reach them if I cannot email and I cannot get past the voice recognition answering machine? How about giving me the option to either talk or press a number? Or maybe when the voice recognition answering machine doesn't understand me the first time, to give me the option to talk to an operator who hopefully doesn't interrupt me and fill in my words because we never know. And could my GPS accept the word call and the word phone when I want to make a hands-free phone call in case I can say one of these words, but not the other one? Now, I know everything cannot be made, 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 made accessible, but can we at least give it a try? Next slide, please. Stuttering is one of the most diverse disabilities where all people stutter in a different way and deal with it in a different way. Some people stutter a lot on the phone, others not at all. I can be fluent when talking to an answering machine, while others stutter way more in the same situation and not at all in another. And stuttering is one of the few disabilities that can increase or decrease depending on the listener or the technology. In a perfect world, we wouldn't even be disabled. A stuttering itself is not disabling. But there are, um, there are people who stutter within every profession, literally everyone. But misconceptions are disabling. And when technology stops me from making that important phone call or, or ch choosing a TV program or, or asking for directions while driving, I'm being made disabled. And next slide, please. And that's why I contacted Funka and the Swedish Stuttering Association to turn my vision into reality. Funka are experts on accessibility Stamnik Subundet are experts on stuttering with a community of people who stutter and clutter and their allies to share their knowledge and, uh, and experiences. Both organizations are here to help you, to help us and together finding ways to remove barriers, inviting you to join in the process of putting Sweden, its authorities, municipalities and companies on the international map for increased understanding of the needs of people who stutter and other speech and language target groups affected by inaccessibility. And together find solutions and providing guidelines to make community technology accessible to all. Now, if you want to hear me stutter, I'm looking forward to, to answering your comments and questions in the panel later on. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Anita. That was wonderful. I, I really I'm always so amazed by your engagement and your way of, of explaining the problems or the not the problems, but the feeling around around stuttering. So thank you very much. That's extremely, extremely uh, well put uh, background information for this. So so that was the situation then. And then we uh, applied for uh, for funding from uh, Arvsfonden, the Inheritance Foundation in, in Sweden. And then, ta-da, something happened. We were um, uh, we got the, the approvement. And now I'm going to leave the floor to Eva Björk, uh, my colleague, who is uh, managing the project um, uh, from Funke's side. So please, Eva, let us know what is this project about? What are we going to, to solve in this project? Yes, thank you, Susanna. Uh, yes, I will just try to switch a slide here. Yes. Um, so, I mean, thank you, uh, thank you, Anita, as well for for laying down the, the background uh, of uh, of the project uh, so well. Uh, so, let me just start with saying that um, uh, you know we are we we all know that we we today we live in the era uh, when the digitalization became a part of uh, of our lives. Um, today, uh, we use more and more uh, technology uh, on daily basis in our daily activities. And more and more of this technology uh, is actually speech uh, voice controlled. 
And uh, I think many of you uh, know that this technology is uh, uh, very beneficial uh, for, for many of, of us, but it, uh, uh, but it does cause uh, problems for, for people who stutter, uh, for people who uh, have strong accents, for people as I myself, for example, who, using, who are using on daily basis language, uh, which is not their mother tongue, uh, or for people with, uh, with many other different speech impairments. So as Anita mentioned, that was basically the, 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 the main question uh, we ask ourselves, uh, how can we fix that? How can we make sure that speech controlled uh, devices and, and services uh, work so, so, so they are beneficial for everybody? And this is how the speech as a digital tool project uh, became a reality. So the project is a collaboration of the uh, Swedish Stuttering uh, Association and FUNCA, and it is funded, uh, as Susanna mentioned, by the Swedish uh, Inheritance Fund, the Almena Arsfonden. And um, yes, it is technically a national project, uh, so, so the focus will be uh, in different activities on, on Sweden. However, the, uh, the, the results of the project uh, are possible to implement uh, internationally. And this is because the stuttering uh, is often forgotten aspect of uh, accessibility, and it is a global issue. And the uh, project will last for three years. So uh, um, what are the objectives of uh, Speech as a Digital Tool project? Um, I, I can put it uh, like this, I think, that we're focusing on sort of two groups. So the first one is uh, supply and demand side. And here uh, the goal is to increase awareness and make improvements uh, to the target group's needs at those who are uh, either buying and uh, using uh, the technology that it's uh, voice controlled, or those who are actually producing and supplying uh, this kind of technology. But uh, we have, of course, focus also on end users. And the goal is uh, to make sure that communication services and, and products are accessible for everyone, that everyone can use them uh, despite their abilities. And that's why one of the objectives of this project is as well to propose real concrete solutions for the supply and demand side. So they can actually do uh, those improvements. Uh, so, so the services work better and as they are, uh, as, and they work the way they were actually meant to work. So how are we uh, planning to do it? How are we planning to reach those uh, objectives? Well, we're going to start with the research. Uh, first of all, we want to find out what kind of products, what kind of services that use uh, voice as a, or speech as a, as a digital tool are out there. Who is using them? Uh, we want to know if uh, those who, who purchased this kind of services when they were making the decision, were they thinking about uh, and considering the accessibility of the services? And if so, what kind of groups uh, they were considering, uh, considering it for? Were people who started one of those groups? The big part of the project is as well user involvement. So uh, together with the users, we want to as well um, sort of define and uh, pinpoint the, the concrete issues, the concrete problems that the targeting group has with the speech controlled uh, technology devices and services. And then together with the, uh, with the users, we will test them, we will analyze them, and based uh, on, uh, on this knowledge and all this da data that we will collect, we will share this knowledge. We will share this knowledge by proposing uh, solutions in a form of a, a checklist. And all of this, of course, will be done in collaboration with all uh, stakeholders. 
So the target groups of this project uh, are public and private sector, uh, which means this is those who usually buy and use uh, communication services uh, in order to, um, uh, to, com to, to communicate with their clients and, and public uh, 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 in general, but also producers and suppliers who are uh, yeah, who are, who are who are responsible for actually producing this kind of technology. Uh, the target groups are, of course, as well end users, and I mentioned earlier, and that's people who stutter, but also people with other speech difficulties. Uh, so, as you can see, the project uh, is actually has actually very broad outreach uh, and, and and target uh, groups in general. And you can contribute and benefit. Uh, as, as I mentioned, the project is technically national, but we are interested uh, in, in the feedback from, from uh, other countries as well. Uh, and, uh, and since the producers and suppliers of uh, many of the speech controlled uh, uh, products and services are actually international. So, so the, uh, the, the covering of the project is really global. But we will come back to, to how you, uh, especially do, those of you who are in Sweden, how you can actively uh, take part in the project. Uh, we will talk about it a bit later after the panel discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eva. Uh, for that, now we know everything about the project, <laughs> or at least the, the, the first parts. So it's going to be really, really uh, interesting to see how we can uh, achieve all these goals uh, in the project. Uh, but we do have uh, quite a long time to do it. And we know that there is a lot of interest. And we have seen that no, no, not least in, in all the uh, registrations for this, uh, for this webinar and also a lot of other uh, questions and, and interest that we have got from, from the community so far. So I'm really excited because um, I think um, this part of accessibility is really maybe not forgotten, but, but very much less highlighted than, than other, other parts. So uh, with that, uh, we can start to uh, ask our distinguished panelists to enter the stage or whatever you do when you, <laughs> when you turn on your camera uh, so that we can start the discussion. So hello, everyone. Good to see you. And I'm especially happy that Elizabeth also is here. So we have... Uh, with us today, uh, we have a, a fantastic panel, I would say. We have Anita, the person behind the project. We also have uh, from Iceland, uh, Sigridur Fosberg, who uh, I met the first time uh, kind of backstage on an EU uh, conference on something, I can't remember what, what it was, but something about disability or accessibility, I guess, in, in Brussels. And I heard somebody speaking Danish, and as I I have been living half of my life in, in Denmark. I always go for the, for the Danes. And then I realized that the two people I was hearing discussing in Danish, none of them were Danes, but they were speaking perfectly fantastic Danish. And from a Swedish, as a Swede, I mean, that is, that is an achievement. It's not an easy language to know all the nuances and the pronunciations. So I was just standing there looking at these two ladies and thinking, wow, aren't they fantastic? And then I realized that, that they also had speech disorders, but that wasn't heard. And I was just amazed. So that was how my friendship with, with Sigridur uh, started. So I'm extremely happy to have you in the panel today. Uh, Sigridur has also had a small, uh, no, short um, period of her time in Sweden, but unfortunately left us again. I can understand that because Iceland is fantastic, but it was good to have you here. And now it's even better to have you back uh, virtually. So Sigrid is not only a very talented person in speaking Danish, she's also the chair of the Icelandic Stuttering Association and uh, one of the board members of the World Stuttering Network. So another, another of these persons who know everything of this topic. So fantastic to have you with us today. And I know you have a very tight schedule. So thank you for for putting that into your calendar anyway. Uh, and then we have all the way from the UK or maybe Belgium, uh, originally from the UK, but at least right now in Belgium, after what I've heard, uh, we have Gareth Wolkom, who is the leader of a company called With VR uh, that is focusing on supporting both end users with uh, speech disorders and also speech therapists to 
better understand and also researchers to better understand this whole topic uh, using virtual reality. So super cool uh, technology and really interesting. And I think also uh, something that we can uh, also look into in, in this project. And I've, I've learned so much just from, from reading up on, on what your company is doing. So that's, that's also really, really interesting. And thank you very much for, for being with us today. Uh, I know Gareth is also one of the board members of STEMLI, which is one of the other international stuttering associations. So very distinguished guest and a lot of expertise in our panel today. Thank you, thank you for that. And from the public sector uh, side, we have Elisabeth Aguilera, who is the head of accessibility in the Swedish Employment Agency. Um, also very engaged and, and uh, um, wanting to make sure that, that many things become accessible, especially maybe in the uh, world of, of Swedish public sector agencies, but, but also I think has an engagement on a, on a broader scale. So thank you for joining us today. Um, and I and I know that you also have a full calendar, <laughs> so and also on a short notice. So thank you very much. Uh, and then of course Eva, the uh, who is managing the project, is also in our panel. So uh, and again, uh, any questions from the audience, please just write them in the Q and A, and we will um, and we will respond to them uh, on, in just a little bit. So I wanted to start with asking you, as we now have really all the experts with us here today. Um, what is currently the most important issue for people who stutter today? If we start with Sigridur from the Icelandic and international perspective, what would you say is the most important topic or issue in your, in your view? It's, uh, can, you, can, you, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Great. It's hard to speak on behalf of everyone, I think because we are so different. So maybe that's, that's most important to to um, to to yeah to um, to understand that we are as different as we are many, and that um, stuttering can be different for for every person, and um, their their experiences, their um, ways of dealing with it. Um, yeah, that that we're not um, put together in one group. Um, I mean, we, we stand together, we fight together, and at the same time, we are very different. Hmm. And that makes, of course, the, the kind of the message a little bit less easy to, uh, to provide <laughs> if, if you need to, if diversity is, I mean, that's, it's, um, it's important, but it's also more difficult to, to communicate in a kind of efficient way. So I understand your point. Yeah. And I think just uh, based on my experience, uh, I think that is not so known that stuttering can be so have so many faces, if you like. I, I think that is that's an awareness um, issue, uh, as far as I can see. Yeah, and perhaps that that there's a lot happening under the surface. Um, there's a lot um, of feelings or avoidance or past experiences that 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 maybe others are not aware of. So yes, so I believe. Um, Keeping an open mind and listening, really listening, is 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 key. That's 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 what we want. Yeah, it's a truly hidden disability in that respect because I also I think that many people who have uh, speech disorders try to kind of hide it, and that's also makes it harder for for the rest of the community to to really understand the the problems. Yeah. So Gareth, what's your view on this from the more maybe I mean both end user and technological uh, side of this? If you now represent both the industry and the, <laughs> and the community so you can answer from any any perspective really yeah um so there's a very big um uh has a very big uh difficulty with with uh people who stutter in approaching um uh situations where they have to use their voice um and because of many uh negative thoughts and negative experiences yeah. from the past um th this has shaped the way that that's we think that that's future uh, speaking situations might go. Um, so approaching things like uh, phone calls um, and and uh, many different things can be very difficult because um, we sometimes have situations where the listener doesn't understand what we are saying over the phone. Sometimes they think um, it's a bad line. 
um, and it can be very difficult to show that you have a stutter in those sorts of situations. Um, but now with uh, tech, uh, now with uh, technology, we can do so many new uh, new things um, where we can adapt um, the the um, the uh, technology that we use and uh, provide supports for people who stutter and uh, many more uh, people who who who, um, who also have a different way of speaking to. So how do you, I mean, you obviously believe in technology because that's what you work with. So I won't ask you that obvious question, but, but do you see an increase in the use of emerging technology like virtual reality, for example, or, or other, um, other kind of cool new technologies in, in trying to bridge these gaps? Or, or are you the only, the unicorn who is the only one who's try, trying to do this? Or is there a small community of, of companies or developers trying to solve some of the speech disorder uh, issues with, with new technology? What's, what's your you on that so there are many people uh, looking at uh, looking at uh, mobile apps um, and using um, uh, different uh, kinds of assistive technology um, to assist uh, people who stutter and as technology um, improves um, as it gets faster as it gets cheaper we can start to place it into the hands of more people um, it, in um in a uh, in um in a uh, public um so it just becomes easier to use um and with the uprise of things such as virtual reality and augmented reality and uh, and ai um we can provide more tools uh for people um um to assist them in um in um uh, in um in a speaking so it's not you are not the only solution. There are there are plenty of other ideas out there. Well, that's good. That's good to know. <laughs> so Anita, I know you. I, I know I can't really ask you what is the most important thing because you have a list of like two hundred important things. But if you would <laughs> to choose one one aspect of this or 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 just uh, something uh, that you think is is kind of the most pressing thing from your perspective, what would that be? Well, then number one would be uh, uh, awareness because um, uh, we find two, two, two kinds of, of um, um, thoughts about stuttering. One half says, oh, poor little thing, you need help. While the other one says, well, um, stuttering isn't a problem. Well, try to order something that you cannot say, try to say, say, say hi on the, on the phone and the only sound that you hear is <sighs> So it, it, is, it is a problem, but that d d doesn't mean that we need help. Um, uh, we like talking, we can talk. So what we need is that little, little thing called time. Um, uh, and also, um, uh, what we need is is to get more more attention to to stuttering. I mean, everything is based on um, um, hearing, uh, uh, wheelchair, you know, um, um, the, um, and and what we need is to get focus on speech because speech speech is the is the second need that people have. That's come come communication so we need more more focus on speech and, and, and also we were we were hoping to get more more people from authorities here and they aren't here because they they say we know nothing about stuttering and there you have it we need to change that and how many people here know that today is the international stuttering awareness day and it is ratified in in uh, Brussels by the U U U European Co Committee, we have our our own ribbon. It is blue, blue, green. So awareness is everything. Okay, so we have awareness, we have technology, and we have time. I think that was a really that is what we need is time. <laughs> so that's, but how do we how do we create more time? Uh, that's kind of a, a difficult thing, but but it's that's that's a really it's a good catch. So if we go to the public sector body uh, that we have here, the Swedish Employment Agency, 
So, uh, Elisabeth, I don't, I won't ask you to solve all these problems uh, in the panel, <laughs> but, but being the head of, of accessibility, maybe you can provide us with a little bit of, of insight in how stuttering or peach, speech disorders are kind of seen or, or taken care of uh, from your perspective in, in the public sector. We, we are not kind of putting you on the spot here because you're just one out of many public sector agencies who, who you know, could, could have been here. So, so, but what's your, what's your thought? Is it like Anita says that most of the focus is on, on visual hearing and motor impairments, kind of the physical things that we see and, but what's, what's your, what's your thought on this? Well, um, I relate to all of you that uh, has been speak, speaking so far, because I can also say that I'm not just from the public sector. I'm also a mother and um, my son has a uh, language impairment. And uh, I can relate to that situation, the frustration when he wants to explain himself. And when he was a little boy before I knew um, what he needed, that was time, I started to fill in the words, the worst thing you can do, right? So I learned and I seen it close up. So, um, and I can relate to what you said, Anita. I didn't know much about stuttering before actually just a couple of days ago. I, I've been close to it, but not that close as my son. And it is like that, as you said, Susanna. Unfortunately, we're not so mature as we wish we were because we're still working so much about the awareness and, and um, like the maturity and not just the, in the public se sector, but also in like the whole country. Because uh, then we also have these um, companies that, uh, uh, sorry, can you help me with the words? Um, uh, Leverantörer. <laughs> Suppliers? Suppliers, thank you. Um, I'm so, so used to speak uh, in Swedish in this category. So uh, suppliers, and uh, they also need to be more aware. And it's really hard to relate to this when maybe it's a lot of the um, guidelines and it's more focused on the technologies rather than actually the person. So if you turn around and actually understand that there is there's a story behind everything. There is a feeling behind everything. And when you start speaking in that manner, you will understand it better. And um, to get a closer awareness to this, uh, to the stuttering, I myself anyway, tried all the channels at the, the, public, uh, the Swedish Public Employment Service to see how it was to get in touch with us. And that's where you have to start, right? And uh, I got the insight to understand that it's not that very easy. And uh, of course, my heart was broken because I could deal with my son immediately. Um, so we are working with everything, but unfortunately, unfortunately, this area is so huge. I'm never gonna be an expert in this uh, because it's so many people with their own perspectives and uh, all, oh, sorry. Um, all the impairments can be very different, like you said, uh, Sigrid. Uh, sorry, did I pronounce your name right? <laughs> Gridur. 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 Okay, all right. Gridur, so, yes. and um, so it will be very hard to be an expert in this, but uh, we're trying anyway to increase the, the, the um, curiosity in this area because everyone that is working uh, uh, at the organization, they are specialists within their area. And if they start becoming curious to learn more, we're gonna be a team. And then we're like getting all the knowledge together. Everybody knows a little bit, but together we know a lot. So that's how we're trying to work with it. Um, I work a lot with something that's called the fun theory to not make this something that is like sad or bad. This is fun. We're changing Sweden. We're changing the world and we're making this a better place. And this we should be proud about. And it's not gonna be easy. And if you're starting to like, I mean, yeah, the vision is right. It, um, it's really important. So you know what direction to take, but it's really important also to be kind. Like it's not that easy to take it. 10,000 steps ahead, we're gonna take one step every day, but just one. But as long as we're taking one step in the right direction, you're gonna do well within time. That's what we're talking about. So back to the time and awareness that has to do with everything. It's not just being a person with impairment, but also the 
people that is trying to understand it and making the technology in this case better. <laughs> Thank you. That was a very, 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 mm, uh, I think, for broad and also uh, interesting uh, perspective of this not being the kind of the agency is always on, only looking at compliance but really also emphasizing the, the end user perspective in this because I think that is one of the problems with when we enter into legislation and technical standards mm -hmm. that the, the end user and the kind of the human uh, nature of this kind of disappears when you when you focus so much on the technical standards even though they are extremely important that still they sometimes blur the view of why we're doing this so yeah so thank and it, you very much. thank you Susan. i'm not allowed to add something on absolutely you can you're free um, to speak <laughs> thank you um i just want to say also that one thing that we're trying to do at the um, my agency is that we actually can implement a policy just about digital accessibility. And something that is so different with this policy compared to the, like being compliant to the laws is that it actually talks a lot about the behavior um, because it's so important how we actually are behaving in the digital platforms. How are we gonna be inclusive if we don't even understand the needs that each and every person has when we're in just in this room, for example. So um, my hope is that uh, with this policy, we're not just going to change what we're putting in codes, but change the whole perspective and our behavior. And if we can get change within the core, I believe in a, a sustainable change with the agency and then lately uh, in Sweden and hopefully the world. So that's that's really hopeful words. So I want to turn to Eva for uh, now we have heard what kind of the needs and uh, how much of this will you succeed <laughs> fixing in the project? No, that's not really my question. But I mean, uh, but some some of the things that we have looked into is uh, I think is part of what we aim to do. So would you like to comment a little bit on on your view on on kind of which parts we could possibly try to mitigate uh, in in this project? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I uh, first of all, I, I totally agree with everyone who was speaking uh, before and pinpointing what the, the important issues, because the other thing as well, I could I can just mention very quickly what we saw when we were researching for the project was the need of inclusion. And this is sort of what's underlying the, the whole project, the inclusion, the, the possibility to be part of the society. And this is what uh, what is where, where, where the technology comes uh, in the picture here uh, that if, if there is a lot of technology out there in public sector or other uh, or private sector, I mean, just, just this, this institutions that everyone wants to access uh, once at the time or, or needs to access them. And if this technology doesn't work for everyone, so we excluding a lot of part, I mean, big part of the society. Uh, so in this project, I mean, this is exactly what we're trying to address. We're trying to figure it out, I mean, to find out um, uh, what are the real issues? What, how, how this technology actually works? How we can uh, possi possibly maybe maybe fix it, or if anything, at least to uh, give some kind of alternatives to it. Uh, so, so this works for everybody, uh, and it's going to be very interesting to as well talk to actually end users to 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 talk to the targeting groups uh, to actually define the real issues they are they have, and what is the the real problems uh, so so we can address them properly and then we can actually um, uh, inform uh, different stakeholders who are uh, part of this uh, problem issue i mean this this uh, uh, these questions so they can uh, improve their knowledge they can do better they can actually make sure that their technology their products uh, are truly accessible and not exclude uh, people with speech impairments. Yeah, so it, thank you, Eva. So in the project, we are first uh, looking into what what is out there, which uh, services are out there, which are most used. Then we are asking the end users what they encounter, what challenges they, they may have. Then we're going to check if the services are actually in compliance with, with the legislation so that we at least know if it's technically okay. And then if we see the gap there, which I think we will find, which is what the user actually needs and what the law says, then that is the bridge where we were try exactly. to, I mean, that's the problem we will try to fix and, and provide solutions on. So that's kind of a bold task, but <laughs> hopefully we will, we will find a, a way um, to try to do that. So, um, 
What do we say, um, Anita, if I turn to you, how could we try to make sure, I mean, not only in the project, but generally as a community and as society, how do you think we can uh, make sure that both supply and demand, both the industry and the public sector, I mean, and public sector here is kind of broad, also banks or, you know, other important um, pieces of, of society um, that they understand and, 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 meet, and meet these needs in, in a better way than is happening today. What do you think, how could we all kind of the takeaway from this webinar, if we can make all the 200 something people <laughs> registered here to, to do something uh, in their lives to, to make a little step for improvement. How can we, what could we do possibly? Two words, use us. Um, there's, this, there's this mission on, the, on uh, uh, European level within the European Disability Forum saying nothing about us without us. When you are building, building something, um, uh, then you're thinking of stairs, toilets. Well, that's the same here. If you are building, building something, if you are making something, if you are uh, providing a, a service, and you wonder, well, um, uh, uh, can it be used? So, so use us, ask us. There are many, many people who who stutter, who clutter, who have, who, who have speech in, 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 in impairments, ask us, use us. Um, I mean, um, uh, I would love to buy uh, uh, Google Home. I, I would love to use Siri, Bixby, but I can't. So, so, so the more you, 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 you let us help you, the more we can buy your products. So it's a, it, it is a win-win situation if you just use us. I, I, you know where, where to find us because we are everywhere around you, but we are very, very good at being silent. And that's another thing that we need you for. So if you help us talking, then we will talk. <laughs> That's really good. That's a good talk, call to action, Anita. Thank you. So, uh, Gareth, um, I, I guess you will just market your own product, which is fine. Uh, but but uh, um, except for, for using your technology, is there anything else we could do to bridge the gap and to make sure that both, both organizations and, and industry understands this better? And I, I do think that everyone should try it out. But, but apart from that, uh, is there anything else we could try? try to do yeah um so um so uh because there are so, so uh, many people who stutter and with other speech uh, disorders um uh, uh like anita said uh, many of us uh, keep quiet and uh, many of us are very good at hiding our stutter um and uh because of this we don't always say what we want to say um and we have um many uh, many emotions that are inside of us that that um, that uh, you uh, don't see. So just um, just uh, not uh, ju not uh, ju not uh, judging a book uh, 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 by its uh, cover, I think, is really needed because um, if we allow people to use their voice, and then this allows many great minds to also be heard. Uh, because about uh, uh, one percent or or, or uh, more of the population has a stutter. So if uh, one percent of the worldwide population does, and then also one percent of uh, companies do, one percent of universities of students, um, uh, they all also stutter. So it could be that this that this silent person. Um, who is in the room might might uh, not be speaking be, uh, because of a speech uh, 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 disorder. So just uh, being aware of um, of of what could be inside, um, um, I think, is uh, really important. And also, I think uh, try to ask in a you know in a gentle way, but still because we can't know if we. I mean, it's impossible to know from a hidden disability that is the problem that we don't see it so it's it's hard to know but we ask i think we also need to understand how we approach this and how we behave and how we in a nice way can try to understand people and and also have the 
uh, the possibility to to ask uh, in a good way because I think that's we, we, that's the only way to learn, right? Yeah. So um, so it's always really good to ask a a, a person who stutters um, uh, what you can do for them, like. Um, um, uh, because many people don't know how to react um, or when a person stutters. So if you ask that person what you can do for them, um, and then that creates a safer and a more uh, comfortable space um, in between the listener um, and the speaker too. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Sigrid, what what's your uh, what's your thoughts on this? How what can we do except uh, apart from what is already been said here, how can we make sure to to meet the demands of of this population, the one percent? Hmm. There, there have been so many good answers already. Um, I know you mentioned, um, yeah, how to how to ask, how to address it, um, and I believe, yeah, I mean. I believe it's so important to to keep an open mind and to really really understand and really um, really get it um, understand that 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 this is just a way of speaking. This is just like um, um, a foreign accent, and this is some, this is our reality every day, and um, and this is this is not. Um, uh, the, 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 this is completely the norm. This is the norm for us, and this is just one way of speaking. And that, of course, all all communication technology should be accessible for us, just like just like everybody else. You know, it's it's not. It, it's 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 one percent of adults, but it's it's four four to five percent of 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 children. Mm. And um, yes, to to really. Um, to to really see it as something normal. That's that's what we would like. Yeah, to approach this the norm critical perspective on this. That's also a very good uh, a good way of of looking at it. So so I will ask Elizabeth, and I know that you unfortunately have something else that you need to take care of, change the world or or save the world or something like that. So I'll, I'll <laughs> we'll have to let you go at at two o'clock. But but I would would like you to. Just um, give you the floor to be to to respond to this. So, what do you, from your perspective, you know, how how can we do this? How can we bridge the gap? And 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 also, I would like you to to uh, kind of uh, do a sneak peek to the next question, which is, which is about regu regulations and standards. So, if you think that could be a potential um, path forward or or step forward, so please. Well, if I start in the very end, regulations and standards, I think that's, unfortunately, I'll say, is always needed. Um, but it's, it's you have to come from two directions. A couple of years ago, I was trying to, to draw a map of actually what am I doing at my agency? <laughs> and then I um, tried to explain it for myself. And I started with the, the person that was standing there like with this arm up and it's broken heart and saying, I want to be included, please. And then from above, I had um, accessibility uh, directives and then also the, like the, um, the boards of all these different agencies and how we're working together and not wasting our time doing things uh, on our own, but actually together. And then also like these arrows <laughs> going from this person to answer the most important uh, question. What is it to include someone? What is it that the feeling that we're after? How do we know that someone is feeling that they're included? And uh, how do we get the people that is actually going to develop this, understand what they need to do to include another person? And also we have to understand that these are people too. Do they feel like they're included? Like also that you said this about that is, um, it's not visual for the eye, right? And many disabilities or impairments actually isn't. And it also can depend on the situation. Also, it, it can be increased also or 
yeah, it, it's so many user situations um, that we have to understand what actually we changing for so many more than just one percentage. It's changing for everyone, if we understand. And to respond to this about like asking and use us, that is exactly what uh, we want, because I'm, I'm speaking for several from, from my agency and several from um, Sweden's agencies. This is what we want. And also like my colleagues have uh, this um, um, meeting where uh, our colleagues can actually ask questions to our experts and specialists uh, about different ideas. So, and also we, we realize this, uh, the, um, the interest is increasing for every week. And that's actually what we want. I mean, so this I know, and the people that is developing the, the enrollment, for example, they're also working close up to the user organizations. So we're trying, uh, and I know that the interest is there, but then again, it's always going back to the time. It's not enough time, <laughs> but then um, we are so curious and we're trying our very best on the different um, parts of the agencies. We also have this work-oriented rehabilitation uh, staff uh, and we're trying to get in a, a congruence on the agency that we actually work really close to each other because we're 11,000 people uh, at just our agency that needs to change their way of seeing things, changing their perspective and, and getting a bigger understanding, but most of all working together. So we are aiming for the same goal. Uh, I don't know, Susanna, is it this answering your questions? <laughs> I think you're answering many questions <laughs> and certainly in, in the kind of in the frame of what I was asking. So yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But uh, just going back to this, like, first of all, we have to understand how it feels. And understand the, the, um, the person's needs and, and point of view. And I think it, just what I like, I did myself trying to get through the um, telephone exchange and I realized just after two questions, I couldn't uh, come anywhere, I, I couldn't proceed. Um, so we have a lot to do. We know that we have a lot of debt. Um, and this is what we're aware of, um, but this is what we need to continue doing, uh, include everyone and especially the ones that has the experience, of course, but also to um, make this possible, like have um, the possibility for a laboratory so we can actually understand a little bit more and, and feel it ourselves. Um, so we actually see what, other people are seeing, we can never feel the same thing. We can never understand it 100%, but uh, to actually widen our perspectives is really important. But most of all, like you said, use us, <laughs> actually include the people that we're developing for. That's the most important. And to, to um, answer that, we actually have that as one of our uh, developing, um, the word I'm looking for is, um, sorry, um, development principles, <laughs> that's the word I was looking for. So inclusive design is actually part of uh, one of our in, in development uh, principles. And also this is what it's gonna be in the policy as well. And that's says the most important thing, uh, acknowledge the exclusion and also include the users. And we're working on it, but it's a, um, it's a big culture to change. And there's a lot of perspective to change. So it's a lot of work to do, but there is so many curious people uh, at our agency that is doing a lot of change. Um, so it's gonna spread. Okay, but, um, so thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth, <laughs> for taking the time. You've been, been speaking about time all the time. So, uh, but thank you for, for taking 30 minutes of your time to, to be with us today. And I hope that uh, the employment uh, agency uh, will be part of the project so that we can can help you uh, and help help the end users um, with with your um, service digital services that that require speech in different ways. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Um, and uh, and I would like to ask also Eva before we go to the uh, to the questions from the audience. Um, 
what how do you think i know we are we are going to to produce um, checklists in the projects but but how do you think what can be done more than this to kind of to mitigate the this um, the gap we have between uh, knowledge and awareness and 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 this for both the industry and the and the organizations using the technology uh, i mean definitely um spreading the knowledge, I mean, the, uh, spreading the results uh, later in the on when they are actually concrete, uh, that's going to be a big part of our project, uh, because the more um, the more stakeholders we reach, uh, the more stakeholders uh, will as well choose to participate in the project, the more uh, concrete and, uh, um, and, and um, uh, yeah, the more concrete solutions we will be able to uh, produce and uh, uh, and develop and spread them. So, so I think this is really the key uh, to to um, to reach out and to really make sure that people understand this issue um, that there it is and we that we're trying to address. Um, so again, awareness and, and inclusion and user involvement, which is uh, as a part, really big part of this project. Uh, and it's both from the end users and stakeholders to bring them together, work together to, uh, in, in, basically to some, to some degree, and then try to fix this issue together. Co-creation is the Co -creation. Best for that. Yes, <laughs> yes. So let's turn to the, we have got uh, a couple of questions here in the, in the Q&A, so thank you for them. So we have one question specifically about the project, so I'll let Eva answer that. So Amber is asking, uh, in addition to influencing agencies that provide public services, are you planning to share your findings with the private sector, such as Google, Euphoria Team, Amazon, etc.? Oh yes, definitely. <laughs> they are definitely on our list. And uh, actually we were hoping they would be here today uh, and they expressed a really big uh, interest in the project. They are, um, they think that the, the question is very important, but how unfortunately, uh, since they are usually on the other side of the, uh, of the Atlantic, so it just didn't work out uh, this time to having them uh, on board uh, during this webinar. But yes, definitely. I mean, that's uh, uh, that's uh, yeah. They are the producers. Uh, one of the yeah. They produce one of the biggest technologies that are out there. They are speech controls. So uh, that's uh, that's definitely something that we that we have on our list to do list with the project. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. So we have a question from Sweden here. Bengt uh, is asking, how can we deal with the diversity of stuttering and, and aphasia in voice recognition? So we don't really, well, we have Gareth, you are the technology person here. So maybe maybe you have any some kind of uh, idea about uh, how to, to deal with this. I mean, everyone has been speaking about the diversity and that stuttering can be so many so many things, but do you have any, any views on, on how, how we can deal with it? From a technical side. So, um, so, uh, um, so uh, to uh, recognise uh, this fluent speech is very difficult, um, and because it's so difficult, it's something that um, people haven't um, uh, uh, people haven't uh, studied that much. Um, and typically, we go for the easiest things first. So that's with uh, fluent speech. Um, but what we need to do is, of course, include uh, more. Uh, 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 we uh, need to include uh, more people uh, where we also focus on people who uh, stutter and people who are uh, disfluent. Um, so, yeah, like work really needs to be done um, in in creating algorithms that are suitable for for uh, speech disorders as well, um, because yeah, like it's something that can't be uh, left out. And uh, just like everybody else has said, um, that if you leave it out and then it's not uh, diverse, right? Like it's um, I mean, it's something that's uh, that's uh, left alone. Uh, but of course, we we uh, miss out on on all of these people who um, who who aren't as fluent as others and where their speech is a bit more difficult uh, to to um, uh, to uh, recognize so so what do you in your view uh, do we need more research I mean is science part of the game here or is it just that the tech tech uh, companies need to focus on this more I mean do we know how to do it or is still need more research needed what's your view on that 
so we know partially how to uh, do it um if we know what the user might be saying um such as if they are reading something from a uh, script or from a or from a text and then this is much easier to narrow down uh, what they might have said um but when we have uh, free speech this is this is much more difficult because the user could be saying um the user could be saying anything and as uh, speech disorders are so varied this also makes it quite uh, complex to so what we need, need is people to spend the time on these things uh, where we understand more and where we create uh, better uh, algorithms and systems that can uh, detect better uh, what people are saying. So I, I, I chose to interpret that as yes, we need more research <laughs> because yeah, correct. <laughs> And and uh, and also maybe focus from the from the developers side. But we, I want to tell everyone that's in this room that we do a, a hackathon together with one of the real big tech companies. So we do that every year, uh, accessibility hackathon. And I think it would be really cool if somebody would come up with new brilliant ideas on the stuttering issue because that is I think that is something that would be very well um, received by the jury. I don't run them, but but I know that this is something that is. You know, it really truly would be truly in, innovative. So, if you know young people, students, techie people that would like to to join us for the hackathon uh, in the European Week of People with Disabilities, then please reach out uh, because that I think there is still a, a need for for new ideas or or improvements of of already existing ideas. So, thank you. Uh, we have another question: uh, How can results in a project as yours regarding a particular language be applied to other languages and dialects? So, Anita, do you want to say something about that? Um, well, um, um, stuttering might might sound different, but the but the way we stutter, um, uh, that can be similar to, to um, um, well, different, different, different languages, because when you have a block, uh, that's the same block in Swedish as in English. I mean, you just block because there's no sound coming out. Um, repetitions. They are the, the the same in 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 any any language, so the actual um, um, stuttering uh, functions are the same. Um, uh, they just sound 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 different. Um, uh, I would just like to like to add something something to what you said earlier, so Sustana. So, so um, um, yes. There is a lot of lot of work that needs needs to be done. A lot of research, because this this is this is hard. This is really really big. Again, this is not just about people who stutter, but people who have any 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 way of speaking that is hard to understand for 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 te 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 technology. But if we can start with the things that are easy to fix, then we have come a long way. Like the answering my machines, if we can just press a button, problem solved. So if we if we if we start with baby steps, um, uh, then we can get to the, to, to the big issues. And if, if we can do that in in Sweden, then we can also also tell tell Europe, the rest of the world, if you can only exchange your answering answering machine with the voice recognition to also press a button. You can do this in China. I mean, that's the same, um, the, uh, the same, the same t t t technique that that can be used all, all over the world. Yeah, definitely. And I hope, if and when this project results in in really good solutions and both kind of the the, the low tech workaround things, uh, that kind of thing, but also maybe new ideas and or new uh, potential new research. I I hope that we can try to present this not only to to other countries and regions, but also to the standardization communities and, and maybe to you know, put more requirements, more push on, on the requirements that, that supports the legislation as well. 
uh, because as we have already said, this is kind of a not forgotten, but but not uh, an area that is not not in focus so far. So I, I hope really that this can not only be kind of the results applied in different regions, but but also that we have a little higher ambition uh, to to actually change things uh, with the project, even if it's a even if it's a small one. So um, we have another. A uh, question here from Gunilla, uh, also Sweden. I work with students having dyslexia, dyspraxia, and other speech-related variations. Some of them benefit a lot from speech-to-text, like people uh, with dyslexia, for example, available, for example, in Word or Google Docs. What are your experiences of the technology behind these assistive technologies? So, does anyone who would like to... Anita, yes, <laughs> please. I also use it because um, um, it is not just easier because uh, um, someone so, someone writes it for you, but um, but to make the writing be exactly as I'm saying, I need to practice my speech. So so I use this actually for for speech training. So if I speak slowly and articulate, then it writes exactly what I'm saying. So it, it can be used in in many many ways, and um, uh, I am very very happy that that we're now seeing in these new new com com computers, in these new phones, that it's included in your de de device that you can use uh, speech to 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 uh, text um, uh, and I know that there are other 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 people with um, uh, uh, speech in, in impairments using it for ex exactly that for speech speech training so yeah definitely see do, do you have a, a view on this do you have any experience on using speech to text? technology or? I don't. And I have been thinking about it that that what really hurts is that when the technology is is saying, you know, you are wrong, you know, this is not, this does not work, this does not compute. And the thing is, it hurts because because that's what we've been experiencing throughout our lives with, with people and with legislations and systems, organizations, companies, schools. So it's like we understand that there are technical uh, uh, barriers, but I don't believe that we as a society and the world community should, should, uh, we, shouldn't lack, we shouldn't lack behind technology. So I believe that technology will then follow when we have, like you talked about the legislation, Susanna, when we have really focused on that. And um, um, I mean, for me, for a long time, I, I did not go for my dream. And there are many people who stutter who don't, who believe that they cannot work uh, in their dream job. Uh, they might not apply. Uh, and if they do apply, they might not get the job. They might not get the the uh, assistance and the adjustments that they need. And they, they, they can be simple. Um, they can be, for example, working in, in smaller group meetings, raising your hands, things like this. Um, so I believe that, that we, should, we should keep working on a technology and, and also at the same time on the whole, on just, you know, on, on the accessibility as a as a whole as a you know yeah mm. yeah I, I agree it's we have to have the kind of diverse and holistic view on the other hand I think if there is a technology that really helps people with reading and writing problems for example then that is not that is not a problem if that is that as such that I mean the assistive technology as such if that is not helping everyone, then that's also fine to have a specific tool that, that helps this specific group, just as we need sign language for people who are deaf and so on. So we need to be, I think we need to have kind of two levels of, of understanding of this. We try to be as holistic as, as possible, but also some groups will always need more specific uh, technology and that must also be, be okay. Uh, so, so I think there's, there's, there's no contradiction there, uh, but I'm also happy to hear that, that Anita is using this technology for 
uh, or that that you know about people who are using uh, that technology for uh, more like training. So Anita, you looked like you wanted to say something. Yes. Um, uh, uh, what, uh, uh, what I also 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 feel when I make making this call and you have this this machine saying, I didn't hear what you, what you are saying. I cannot understand what you're saying. Please say it again. That's the thing that we hear on a daily basis. And it is very, very hurtful to hear this. And you call again and you try again. And every time you get to hear, I don't hear, I cannot understand what you're saying. You have to try again. You have to be fluent. And the conception of, of many, many people is, um, stuttering needs to be fixed. You have to be fluent. Well, if you say that to, 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 to a person who is deaf, you have to make sure that you can hear. If you tell a person in a, in, in a, in a um, wheelchair who is, who is facing stairs, and you would say to this person, um, you cannot go get, get up the stairs. You have to try harder. You, you have to try harder. You have to fix this problem. You don't do that. So, so, so even the, use, the um, usage of the words, I cannot hear you. You have to try again. You have to try harder. That's 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 something that's very very itchy because we have heard, heard it since, since we were small, and because of my of my illness, I'm I'm now sitting in 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 a in a um, wheelchair, and people don't see that I'm ill, and they don't see it now. They don't see that I have lots of makeup on because we are having these happy happy faces, but we are meet, meeting meeting not just te uh, te technology, that's not really, really helpful, but we also meet, meet people who are not really uh, uh, helpful. So, so the more awareness we can raise, the more understanding, the more open we can talk about, about stuttering, ab about cluttering, about, about speech, because again, this is about speech and when you have a baby, the first thing th that you want it to do is breathe and eat. But the next thing is speech. It is very, very important that we learn how to com 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 communicate, how we can help each other to communicate, and also the words we are using. That I think I... I think I, without having um, scientific proof, I can, but I can almost assure you that the people who uh, invent, no, not invented, but did this, this uh, phone answering machine thing didn't think, didn't have that expect, uh, perspective at all when they decided what this voice is, uh, automatic voice is going to say. I, I don't think they ever thought about that, that you could perceive it as, as you know, um, a bad, bad, bad behavior. But again, it goes back to, to awareness. And I think if we uh, succeed in this project to not only understand what's out there, where the biggest problems are, where the gaps are, and, and come up with solutions, I also think that during the whole project, we will try as hard as we can. And I know Eva will do everything she can to, uh, to, to raise awareness and also communicate. So everyone who's here today, if you want to spread the word about the project or, or anything else about stuttering, I know both or all of these organizations that we have mentioned have loads of good material on their websites. Uh, so we can also provide you with links if you want to know more. If you are, I don't know if all our participants are experts already, <laughs> but, but at least I think we can help each other and, and help this topic by, by sharing and spreading information um, at a general level to make sure that at least, you know, stepwise try to get more people on board and, and understanding this. So we do have some comments in the in the Q&A and chat about just um, confirming that um, that multiple diseases or, or I mean that we have a broader audience here that is not only stuttering but also other speech impairments and different languages and so on uh, and also that there are um, other kind of technology text-to-speak functions uh, that are provided uh, for example in Sweden so thank you for those comments but no real uh, questions so far so I will just try to um, make the panelists do a, a short um, final remarks here 
Um, before that, I just want to reply to one question uh, we have got from Alma, who says that we work with telephone exchange solutions. If we want to participate in this project, how can we go about it? So we will provide you with the with the email address that you can so that you can reach out to the project and and make sure that we get you on board. But before we close, I would like to ask um, the dear panelists uh, on. Uh, the legal uh, regulation standards policy, um, what do you see here? Is it more of the human aspect using, we have talked a lot about uh, the, the need for awareness to include users to, you know, the, the human aspect of this, is, is that the way to move forward? Or would you prefer to see um, standards and regulations really lifting this up? As Elizabeth said, that that is kind of the, the way to go to make sure that, that the things happen. Do you think that that perspective, the legalistic perspective is, is what is needed or, or how do you see this? Where would you prefer to, you know, society to move forward? If I start with, with Gareth. Um, good question. Yeah, like, um, I mean, it's not really my uh, strong area, uh, but um, yeah, like I think that everything could, could, uh, could always change. Um, and I think, um, if in the uh, legal kind of areas, um, we should look to see um, what is currently uh, written and um, uh, how this is written and what uh, needs to be changed in order to be uh, more inclusive. Um, and then take it from there, like uh, just as Anita said, said um, it, it's a step-by-step uh, -step, uh, process. Um, so even if we do one, small thing first and then it's achieving uh, something big um, so then we just uh, keep on improving it uh, more and more as we go. Yeah so Eva you are working in, a, in an environment where loads of things are these days about, um, about legislation and standards uh, as being in the accessibility expert world um, but on the same time at the same time your speciality is really the user relation and, and collaboration with end user organizations so so what's your take on this? Is the legal path a good way or is the law just making things boring and, and difficult? <laughs> I mean, I think it's a, it's, it's, it's a very good question. And I think I would start saying that uh, I definitely think that the regulations, they make it easier in a sense that um, institutions, uh, especially I can imagine public sector, they uh, suddenly have to prioritize one thing over the other, because obviously there is always a limited budget, limited resources. So if you have actually something in the regulation, uh, there is actually a law that ends up higher on the priority list. So definitely that's a, that's a plus. Uh, but then as well, I mean, I think it's very important that we, we have this perspective on that end users, uh, I mean, that we don't put the uh, sort of the, the uh, that it's your job to make sure that everything works, that it's your responsibility, but rather to, to make sure that end users have this perspective of, I can be a part of it, uh, that I can actually contribute with my experiences, with my knowledge, with my, uh, with, with, with my way of thinking to make the regulations better, that's actually more suitable for me and uh, my follow um, peers who have similar uh, um, issues. So I think that's that's very important perspective. So it's definitely regulations, but as well in, include uh, end users in creating regulations and that you as, a, as an end user think about it. I'm actually a part of it. I should contribute because it's important. Yeah, that's, that's a very good aspect. Um, and I think that is also really possible these days because the Web Accessibility Directive requires the public sector agencies to have a feedback mechanism. And that's the idea is where the citizens can, can actually give feedback, which could be criticism or, or, or positive feedback. But, but as long as it's constructive, then I think it's really helpful also for the agencies to understand because if there is a lack of awareness, then they are not providing these services because they're evil. They are providing it because they don't know that they are creating problems. So usually I think that this kind of technology is, is there to support users and it does support some users. It's just that it doesn't support everyone. So that's, that's really, it's, that's a good point. Thank you. So Sigrid, are you, are you in believing on policing or, or a nicer way of, of doing things with maybe with sheep and horses or how do you, how do you solve problems in, in Iceland? Well, I believe, I believe you, 
I believe you can't just like it like like Eva said legislation makes things easier but it's not uh, it's not the only way I, I believe actually it's very important to get the public with you in general and to yeah to do this holistically and to really to to, to really to really get get everyone involved and and to really um, help people understand like I said in the comments and like we have um, um, uh, known from the beginning this is going to help a lot of people not 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 just uh, people who stutter and people who clutter and so um, yes and then I believe legislation will then give in you know when we when we really um, have a broad group um, with us not behind us but yeah with us Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. So we start with the legislation and then when everyone is on board and do the right thing, then we can kind of skip the legislation <laughs> because then it will start rolling uh, by itself. Yeah. Right. So, well, I, th I think the legislation will be will be pushed, will be changed with this um, powerful group. So, um, so yes. So Anita, you are the you are kind of the focal point of, of all of this so I'll, <laughs> I'll ask you to to do the closing words for just for this you know what what's your um, view on on human vices or legal laws are also made by humans so that's the, but but anyway do you believe we should push for 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 legal support here or or more awareness raising more the soft way well a little bit of both. Um, uh, th there are many, many, many laws re regarding people with uh, uh, d d disabilities, but somehow we need to raise more, 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 more awareness on uh, that that people who stutter, clutter, or are um, uh, uh, impaired. But well, for 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 other 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 speech speech reasons that they they are a part of the of the legislation. I mean, we still we we, we still have problems at the airports where they think that we are hiding hiding something because we stutter, and when you stutter, you are lying. You know, um, so we have to change this this too. We have to change change how, how people see people who stutter. We have to change people's uh, um, misconceptions about stuttering. We have to talk, talk about stuttering because if we, if we do that, then, then we can get from, it, it is not a problem to, it is a very big problem to something in, in, in the middle. We have to see people who stutter, not not as um, uh, people who are less in, 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 in intelligent, who, who cannot do this this and that job, to to um, uh, people who can talk, people people who can say whatever they want. They just need a little bit more time. So if we can change how people look and how how people think think of stuttering and include us in the already existing legislation, then we've come very, very far. Okay, thank you, Anita. I think that that is a very good where, place to end. So if I can please ask Eva to, to put up the last slide here, because we have, um, we do uh, want to hear more from you and we are uh, eager to, to collaborate with, with everyone. We are going to reach out to people with the experience if, experiences, I'm trying to say, uh, from stuttering and other speech impairments um, across Europe. Uh, so the next phase of the project, we, we will also uh, contact you. So please let us know if you're interested in, in knowing more and, and collaborating. And we also got, got uh, questions in the chat and the Q&A around how to get involved. And we do have the focus on Swedish uh, organizations and um, you know the, the providers of, no, the organizations who are uh, I think providing is the right word here, uh, these, these services because it's a national project, but again, all the producers uh, can come from any place. So, so really, if you are working in technology or in, uh, or in an agency who want to use or want to purchase maybe uh, this technology, then please reach out to us because we, 
we do need real life examples. We don't want to do this in theory. We want to do it for real with real people, with real, um, uh, real uh, examples as well. And I see that uh, Anita and several others have provided links in the, in the chat. So we will also collect those in the thank you email so that everyone uh, gets them. But if you would like to reach out to us, uh, you can email to Eva Björk uh, at funka.com and that's Eva with a W. So E-W-A dot B-J-O-R-K at funka.com. And as you, you can also just reply to the, to the email you will get from, uh, from us after this. So thank you very much for attending uh, and thank you uh, even more to my fantastic panelists. Uh, and uh, I hope to see you again uh, soon. And I think we, as we have had so many people interested here, I, I guess that means that we, we could have more, more events like this and, and attract even more um, attention when we have more uh, results. We already did, uh, we already have done a literature study and I can tell you that there's a lot of research going on when it comes to speech impairments but not much on stuttering, at least not what we have found so far. So stay tuned. We will keep you updated. If you're interested, follow the project, which I hope, and uh, have a very nice Friday afternoon and take care, everyone. Bye-bye.